I am Mark Rudin, welcome back to Know My Boat Building, and today on the 2.4 meter project we are going to make bulkheads. Let's get right down to it. The next step is to make some bulkheads. I pulled this off my full size drawings that had plank reductions drawn on them already, and I'm going to put a bulkhead at station 10 and then um, another one at station five, and those are gonna basically contain my flotation areas. And there's gonna be two smaller bulkheads that I'm also going to create that are going to help support sort of a, a secondary deck that is gonna help deal with my flotation, but it's also gonna support the rudder hardware and allow for um, drainage above the rudder tube. We'll just start with the center line. And I think I want my greatest strength to be athwart ships here, so I'm favoring the grain running athwart ships. And this is only one eighth inch ply. It's very light, it's fairly flexible. I'm gonna put a layer of glass on one side that's gonna to help to stiffen it up. On the other side, I'm gonna add little spruce ribs, not unlike guitar bracing. The idea being we can keep it light, but we can add strength with a little bit of spruce. It's a small amount of work. I don't need to make them super pretty but I think it's a good effective way to stiffen this up without adding weight. And um, we've got the material anyway. We've got lots of small bits of offcuts of spruce, so there's no cost to that. And I'd rather do it that than add more weight in plywood, because I don't really think we need it much heavier than this, to be honest. We're also going to be filling in those bulkhead areas with foam, so there's going to be a huge amount of structure from the foam itself. Just get some clamps going to help me with what I'm doing here. There. Another clamp here. So I'm just going to pop a, some holes in every couple inches. I'll trace around this with some battens. I'm going to be putting a generous fillet in on either side of this to tab it in place to the hull. So I've got some wiggle room. And I'm just going to add a couple holes, top and bottom, flip over on those holes. And I'll grab some thumbtacks to hold them in place there. Now the best way to get accurate with this is make sure you go right through the same holes you used the first time. It can be a little hard to do actually because the plastic is kind of pushed out where that all went through. Got to kind of feel for it a little bit. So I guess I'll do my station five now. kind of curious whether or not I got enough room between these two for one of our other parts. Oh, look at that. We just might. I wasn't planning on squeezing these in here like this, but I'll just drop my ruler on here and just see if it will, if we can get one of these parts out. Look at that. That's fantastic. Yes, we can do that. Okay, so we can get one out of one side and one out of the other side. Nice. That's always a good feeling. Okay, so we'll just draw us a center line here. OK, 
Okay, now I've got one more to do, but I think I'm going to draw these out first before I start making any more confusing with um, more little nail holes. Now I'm not using a flexible batten on here just because it's kind of awkward working on really light material like this. And I, and I know my ship sweeps describe these shapes well when I did my plank reductions. Um, at least in the tight turns I didn't bother with with flexible battens, I use the, the ship sweeps instead. So we'll just continue with that. Okay, well in the end it made sense to just go ahead and pull out the flexible batten and the weights. The, the plywood here is too too light for nails. I tried it, but it kept collapsing. I tried using the bundle batten. But, um, so we'll just do it the same way we did it on the drafting board. hollow shape that's really difficult to try and force in there because it's so slight. Come on. There we go. And my ducks have only got so much weight to them so it's a bit of a wrestling match trying to get them to hang on where I want them to. I need a whole pile of them down there and then I run out up here. We really need a few more ducks. Now this is our bulkhead material and originally I had cut it to fit in here where it's going to stand up vertically. But we decided we need want to kick it back just a little bit. We need to pull just a tiny bit of volume out of our flotation area. Part of it's just to save weight, but it also gives us just a little bit more elbow room. And so I need to fit that to a different orientation. And so the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to spile for it. Or in, but in this case, I'm going to use the type of spiling where I have sort of a finished pattern that I can just trace off of. So I'm going to start with this little block here and I am going to place it down at my the sort of forefoot of where I want this to sit. So this is basically sitting right at where the, the bulkhead's going to stop down there. And this is just a very convenient way to make sure that my pattern is sitting in the right spot. I'm just going to throw my center line on there too while I'm at it. Okay, so now I've just got some junk material that I've made up and I need to be able to suspend this into this location. So looks like I need to trim it down just a little bit to get around the, uh, to notch around these areas. So I'll just quickly do that. So there we go. And what I want to do is keep this from moving. So I'm just going to use like a little, uh, to orient the face of this to my cleat up top. So this cleat going across matches where I want my finished bulkhead to lie. The block at the bottom, of course, is controlling where the bottom of this little pattern sits and these pieces of material up here are just making sure that they're lying in plane where I want the finished top edge to be. Okay, that feels pretty good. We're just going to use hot glue and some little wooden tabs to locate these the, the edges of this profile here. So I just got a whole bunch of these little pieces of spruce that I've trimmed up. And I think actually first I'm gonna I'm gonna set a couple up right at the corner. I wanna I wanna mark where this corner is, because that's fairly important. All right, so I've just cut some random pieces of scrap, little 90 degree corner out of them that are, that's just gonna mark that intersection right there. And then you can see how, just how sloppily I did that. It's, it'll be just fine. It's as accurate as I need it to be. There we go. 
just got to start walking our way up. I'm going to try and mark the very corner of, of where my Kielsen starts there. Now I like using hot glue for this. Um, I mean it makes for a, it takes a little bit longer in a way than say using a stapler or using just a drawn on line, but um, you know I think I get a more accurate result and with a stapler it's, you know, your, your spiling batten as we refer to even this uh, becomes like a really bouncy thing and that's not going to give us a good fit, so. Even just pushing these guys into position, I can moving that piece of door skin ever so much. And it's not necessarily being conducive to getting, giving me the most accurate result. I might just put one in a bit higher here. It will helpfully help keep it from moving. As you can see, if you've got all your stock prepared for this, it actually goes pretty quickly and you get a very nice, accurate result that's easy to transfer onto your finished material. Okay, that looks really good. Now we'll just bring these out. Now these sticks were really just to help keep the panel from tipping backwards further than it has to. And these little guys are doing the job right now. And I just need to make sure that my finished bulkhead just comes up a little higher than these little points right here. And then we're going to, it'll get match the deck crown when we're done. I'll have a deck beam right up against it. So I'll pull that out. And that just slides right out. And that's beautiful. So we'll just trace that on to the bulkhead that I had made before and it should fit just fine. We've got some center lines drawn onto the pattern as well, so I'm going to joggle this up to those. Let's check our pencil for sharp, of course. Okay, there we are. If I like, I could take my ship sweep and just connect those dots if my shapes work out properly. This particular boat and this particular sweep are not totally loving each other. <laughs> it's just sort of a funny thing to think about, but. I already know, even after I cut this, it's going to be a, just a little bit of finessing to get it to fit just so. There we are. Okay. We'll just chop that out and then we'll see how she fits. Slide that up in position. Get a touch in our, in our line down there. Okay, well that fits pretty good. Um, I mean this panel is fairly flexible right now so I tweak it just a little bit this way or that way and it changes the fit. So I really can't dial this in any better right now. So I think my best bet is to take this out of here now and I, I'm going to give this a coat of fiberglass. That's going to stiffen it up a whole bunch. And I'm going to put some bracing across the back side of it as well. And we've also got to have a little hole here, an inspection hole to prove that there's a solid flotation inside. So all those things need to happen. 
my best bet really now is to just take this out and move ahead with my glassing. I'm not going to bother trimming the top until I've got it finally fitted closer into place and, um, and I can get a deck beam in along with it to describe that shape. I've got my aft bulkhead to finish up now. It's pretty much ready to go and two smaller ones which are already fitted in the back. Okay, my panels are a little potato chippy and I need to glass them and I want them to be flat when I'm done. So what I'm doing is I've cut some holes in my backing paper on the my layup table here and I'm just going to double stick tape this guy down just like so. And that's just going to help keep it flat. And I can lay my glass over there and hopefully that should give me a better result than if I were to just try and glass it without this thing being fastened down. Now of course an ideal situation would be if this was a vacuum table and I could vacuum bag it, but that's not something I've gotten into doing yet. I'm not sure if I want to because it gets, starts to get wasteful in terms of uh, waste materials, byproducts. And I don't really like the ethics of that particularly. So I'll just do the same thing here. So outline my panel obviously and just knock a few holes in there. Given all of these a layer of four ounce fiberglass, and the epoxy's hit the green state, so I need to trim it back from the edge right now. Those drafting ducts are there because my double sided tape trick didn't quite work, and some of these panels started to pop up on me. In fact, it's soft enough right here, I just had a corner curl up on me. You can accidentally peel it right off the surface if you're not careful. Okay, I need to make a little collar or kind of a backing ring that we can um, create an inspection port through. So rather than use a uh, commercially made inspection plate, we're gonna make just a simple one out of plexiglass so that the inspector can just see right through it. And if it needs to come out, it can be removed, but otherwise it can stay in place. So I'm just gonna set up to use this hole saw to cut this hole. Hole saws can be a little tricky. Just clamp this guy down. Now the trick to using a hole saw to cut a ring is you gotta do it in several steps. So our first step is just going to be going about halfway through with our first hole. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Always a danger. Okay, too much torque, too much speed. So we're gonna slow it down. There we go, that's much better. Chuck keeps slipping out of my out of the, uh, the taper here. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna switch up bits. Darn it. Go.
bloody thing is not centered. Okay, I'm going to start over. Okay, now I just flip it over. And of course, the trick is always to make sure you only go halfway through. And then I'm just going to set this up first before I start drilling holes. There we go. Holes House have got these little holes for these pins to drop through in the arbor. You don't want it to do these up tight. Um, you want these pins to drop in and hold it. Otherwise, this guy's going to jam up on there and you have a hell of a time getting it off. There we go. That's our finished part right there. We'll just clean that up and then glue that right to our bulkhead. Now using these offcuts from making deck beams, I'm going to make some little guitar braces to stiffen up the backs of these bulkheads. It's going to be a great use for this material that otherwise would have been waste. Okay, here's our bulkheads. They're looking pretty good. We've got a layer of four ounce glass on here. It's got a nice finish. I have to decide whether or not I want to try and fill the weave on this at all. I think I'm probably fine. It's not a high abrasion area. It's just tucked away. I think I'm probably good just the way it is. But um, I won't worry about that for the moment. Right now what I'm thinking about is how to make this stiffer still because there's the glass stiffened it up a good bit. But rather than glassing the backside, I thought we'd just add a little bit of um, structure. So we've got our little backing rings here for our, our inspection hole. What I'm going to do is just add braces like on a guitar back. So basically make some pieces of wood like yay. I'm going to make them so they just hold back from the edge by a couple inches maybe so that I've got room to fill it effectively. Last thing you want to do is start f try filleting things and have like this piece of material getting in your way because that really gets frustrating. So we'll just hold it back. I don't think it needs to come right out to the end anyway. Just bear in mind we're going to have a deck beam going across here so that's going to stiffen it up at the shear line and then of course this is getting fillets all the way around here so this is going to be plenty stiff down through these areas so this is really just to stiffen up the center of the panel. I just drop this guy on the center. Well what we can do is we can come back say two inches Back two inches there, measure off two inches over here, we'll measure off our center, then I'll just use this deck beam that I've already created to get my taper, so like so, like so, so we'll just zip that off on the bandsaw, we'll do a real quick clean up on the belt sander, and that'll be plenty, you'll just knock the sharp corners off. I could probably even get away with beveling these off to reduce weight more, but they're already pretty light. And I've already reduced the overall thickness. They started out as 5 8 thick, and I brought them down to half inch. These compartments are notorious for sort of eventually taking on water. Little things happen, somehow water gets in there, and one of the rules is that you have to have this inspection hatch open for a flood test which drives me crazy because then it means that you're introducing water into a compartment that can't get rid of water very easily and um, and we want it to be dry and, and free from rot so it compromises the boat which really I find extremely irritating. I've got this little plastic bolt here um, it's really kind of a drain plug 
and I'm just going to drill a hole in here and after I fill it this in place we'll just glue this right in and so down the road should you feel the need that you had to kind of try and drain this compartment at least there's a hole already in there it's ready to go all you got to do is undo this bolt and um, there should be a clear passage uh, for water to pass through. I played around with different sizes here it feels like like 7 16 is like the perfect size but not really a lot of room for getting um, epoxy in around it half inch feels a bit big so I'm just trying to decide what to do. Maybe I'll do 7 16 and we'll take a, um, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'll take 7 16 and I'll use a uh, countersink to sort of open that up a little bit on either side. It'll make it like a nice keyed joint. Give myself enough room underneath it for a nice generous fillet. See if that in there, Put it up a little bit, about there is probably good. Just countersink around it slightly. Maybe I should get a bigger countersink than that. There we go, that'll work nicely. There's a nice little slop for a little space for epoxy to sit. <laughs> I think that opened it up to about a half inch in the first. Oh well. Anyhow, I think that's going to be a nice little detail. I like stuff like that. All right. All right, there's one last thing I want to do to the bulkheads before I get ready to install them, and that's knock out this little hole for our inspection hatch. Just start by drilling a couple of rough holes. Okay, I've got my bulkheads ready to go here. These ones aft are tacked in place. And I just thought I'd show you the setup I had for them. I set these little cross balls up temporarily with some nails locating them in place and then set some little battens on here to, um, to clamp them to. So that the battens are, are basically holding these up plumb. And I can pull this out now. So I've got some blocking down here that locates them at the horn timber and, and then these little sticks up here are holding the top end in place. This bulkhead's fitted. Uh, it's ready to get tacked in place. The only thing I need to do is scrub up the surface of the planking for my fillet to hang on to. But before I do that, I need to actually set the height of this because uh, at the moment the height was rough. I wanted to get this in first and then set the height from there. And I wanted to make sure that there's just a little bit of drainage so that any water that comes into this area drains down into the cockpit area because that's where the bilge pump's going to be. And so I'm going to take these clamps out of here because we don't need these anymore because they're really just in the way. And I'm just using a little ruler with a dog clip on here as a depth gauge. So what I want to do is I, I want to take this and I'm going to use it to pick up the depth of my bulkhead here at the shear. And I'm just letting it ride against the face of the in whales. And then I want to take that and carry that over here. And so that brings me to right about there. And I took a moment to make sure that this was what we call horned in. So that means it's, it was, it's nice and symmetrical or square to the center line, square to this bulkhead back here. And so with that horned in, I can mark this depth. And so the dog clip is acting like a depth stop, you see. Really simple. Just like using your miter gauge, really. I just was finding that uh, the miter gauge was a bit too bulky and I was having trouble getting it to fit in with all the sticks in place before. Okay, so there's that spot. 
So what I want to do now is just trim this guy down, probably just a little bit beyond those marks, probably a quarter inch or something like that. I want to maintain as much flotation back here as possible, um, but it's important that I have some drainage and uh, don't take away too much flotation, obviously. So what's going to happen here is this is going to become a sub deck. We'll do this once this is trimmed out and this is fixed in place. We'll project a line from that bulkhead across these guys and over to here, and we'll put a little cleat on here, and we're going to set a deck down in here, and that's going to do a bunch of things. It's going to give us something for our rudder to uh, fasten to to give it strength laterally, and it's going to reduce our volume of flotation in the stern because we need to make sure our boat trims out relatively level when it's if it's submerged and it doesn't look like there's a, a lot of flotation back here but when you crunch the numbers there's a lot more back here than at the bow so I needed to find a way to sort of pull a little bit of that out and I could have done that by moving this bulkhead but I could also do it by losing this sh dropping the shelf in here and maintaining a little more structure towards the center of the cockpit which I think is a good idea so I've got my marks and they're pretty close to my original level line which is great so now I'm just going to pull this out and I'll trim this down and then we'll come back and we'll fit this in place there we go so up here at the bow I need to do a similar operation with this bulkhead basically measuring how far back is it tipping from my station line here. It's two and three quarter there, and that's one and three quarter there. So I need to tweak it over a little. There we are, right on the money. So I'm just gonna quickly draw a line there. that even. Now I want to draw my deck camber on there because I need to cut that out. All right, that's it for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. Please do come back and join us next time. These videos are made possible due to my support on Patreon. For on Patreon, I create educational material based on your interests, and at the upper levels of support, I provide some personalized mentorship. So you can join us by following the link in the description or up in the corner. And I want all of you to get off the couch, get out into the workshop, and get your hands dirty. And until next time, ciao for now.